2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. We'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Miss Riley, after service, we was talking about your friend. If she'd just get a hold of that verse, not to be soon shaken about what's going on nowadays. Now, let's look again at verse number 3. Uh, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Uh, um, Brother Ted mentioned that when he come in the building. You see, you all don't think I pay attention. Uh, I was listening. But he said, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know... What withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. Thank you for these men of God. Lord, I pray that, God, you would keep your hand upon them. I pray that you would open avenues for them to present Christ. I pray you'd give them many souls for their labor, meet every need, supply the Scripture, supply the funds, supply what is needed to win these people to God in these days. Uh, And, Lord, while they're here in the States, I pray you'd give them souls here in the States. Uh, And God, I pray that they would be as lights that shine in this dark and destitute world. Father, thank you for these that have come out tonight. It is so good to see your people and the fellowship with your people, but more importantly, to worship with your people. Lord, you are worthy of our praise. You're worthy of all exaltation. You're worthy of all glory and honor. And Lord, we're hastening that day when we are with you before the throne in Revelation 5 when we can... uh, Proclaim that all power and glory and honor be unto thee. Lord, now we're constrained by this flesh, but we still want to do our best to glorify you and exalt you in this uh, dark world that we live in. Now, Father, I pray you'd meet every need of every heart, enlighten our minds, educate us, strengthen us, uh, help us tonight to realize uh, that we are living in the last of the last days. Uh, And Father, if we're going to do anything for Christ, we need to do it now. As the great apostle penned these words so many years ago, they thought they were in the last days. Uh, But Lord, so much has been revealed and so much has come to pass that was prophesied. Lord, we know that uh, we don't have much time to win folks for Jesus. So Father, give us a zeal for godliness and righteousness. And God, help us, Lord, to impact our world. Father, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Thank you for your kindness. Now be with our folks that are sick, our folks that are providentially hindered, uh, those that are laboring, be with them. Lord, it's good to see Miss Barb tonight. Lord, thank you for protecting her from the fall. Could have been much worse. And God, it's just good to be in the house of God. Help us now. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll bless you and praise you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. And amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things before we get to the message. Now, I don't want to get bogged down too much in astrology, but I'm going to give you a few things here from the Word of God. The first thing I want you to notice is the advent of Jesus' second coming. Look again at verse number 1. The Bible says this, 
Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken of mind or troubled, neither uh, in spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, uh, as the day of Christ is at hand. Now I know that uh, those of you that uh, sit here, you have an understanding of this, uh, uh, but there are many people who don't. Uh, there are many people who want to confuse the rapture and the Lord's second coming as the same thing. They're not the same thing. Uh, there's not a general resurrection. We know the rapture of the church or the translation of the saints of God. Uh, we know that that is the next prophetic event uh, that is going to happen in Scripture. Uh, uh, we know that there's coming a day uh, when the Father's going to look at the Son and say, Go get your bride. Uh, uh, when there's going to be the trumpet, the shout of the archangel, Jesus is going to step out on the clouds. Uh, the dead in Christ shall rise, uh, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. Uh, and so shall we ever ever be with the Lord. Uh, my dear friends, uh, that could happen at any time. We know uh, that Jesus given a sign to the Jews. By the way, the Jews sought for a sign. Gentiles, uh, 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 the Greeks sought for wisdom. Uh, we know that God gave a sign to the Jews. Uh, talking about the budding of a fig tree uh, that when that fig tree budded that that generation would not pass uh, my dear friends Israel became a nation the fig tree budded uh, in 1948 uh, uh, listen uh, a lot of folks thought in 88 the Lord was coming because uh, many times throughout the scripture uh, a generation in the Old Testament was 40 years uh, but they failed to really, uh, uh, realize that God blessed them with 70 uh, and if you live beyond that you was living in the blessing of uh, of God uh, we don't know when a generation shall come to pass but we're getting toward the end uh, uh, we don't have much time uh, 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 you can see uh, what's on the horizon listen I don't know much uh, but I can know when it's been dry and you can go out and you can smell the rain coming in uh, and friends uh, you can go out in the darkness of this world uh, and you can start smelling uh, hey the Lord's about ready to come and what a blessing that's going to be uh, now listen Mm, we rise to meet him in the air. That's not his second coming. Mm, his second coming happens seven years after that. Uh, and that day, he's going to land on the Mount of Olives and split the mountain. And Revelation 19 tells us that a sharp two-edged sword is going to go out of his mouth uh, and it lets us know uh, uh, he's coming back on a white horse and we're coming back with him on white horse. Hallelujah, I finally get to be John Wayne. Uh, I'll be coming back on a horse uh, and the Lord is going to settle who he is. I said this morning, he came the last time as a lamb. He's coming as a lion the next time. And can I say, every man shall see him in his glory. And that's when they cry for the rocks to fall on themselves. Amen. What Paul is pinning down in this chapter is dealing with his literal second coming. He's talking about when he literally comes back. And so you need to understand that. Now friends, we're getting so close. We're on the brink of his coming. And God help us to be busy about the Father's business. We see the advent of a second coming. I want you to notice the Antichrist will be revealed. Let me stop right here. Somebody tells you they know who the Antichrist is, you mark that booger. He hadn't been revealed. Look with me. Uh, and and we, we find that in verse 3 he says that no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first and that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition now the son of perdition the antichrist will be revealed before the second coming but he's not going to be revealed until after the rapture okay but let's look at verse 8 it says and when uh, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, Revelation 19, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Now, after the church is taken out of here, there's going to be a one-world government, there's going to be a one world economy and there'll be a one world religion it's going to be a one world everything and the one who runs it all is the antichrist 
during that period, uh, the first three and a half years of the seven years, uh, uh, will be a transitional period. It will be transitioning to the one world system. And uh, it's going to appear like uh, everything's going to be okay. Now you've got to understand, when the church is taken out of here, now I realize the Bible says many are called and few are chosen. Not everything calls itself a church is the church of the Lord. But there are, there are going to be a lot of folks check out of this world. Hallelujah, I'm one of them. Amen. And there'll have to be some explanation as to why they all disappeared. Right. I don't know if they're going to tell everybody Bigfoot caught them all up. Uh, UFO, if COVID did it in, I don't know what they're going to tell people, but they'll come up with something. And the world's going to be thrown for a loop. And so the Antichrist is going to have all the answers. And uh, the first three and a half years they'll transition. The last three and a half years will be total anarchy. Hell itself will be on this, wor on this earth. Amen. And can I say, there's a verse in there that says, Now he that letteth will let until he be taken away. That's talking about the Holy Ghost. When we go, the Holy Ghost goes with us. So there'll be nothing constraining people from doing what they want to do. Do you realize that the devil's crowd also knows the, that the Lord's coming soon? Do you know it is no accident there has been a barrage of things that have been befallen people for the last 10 or 15 years that is preparing them for the devil to reign in this world? Don't, don't take any of this lightly, and I know some of you think the preacher's crazy. It's all right. I, I, I may be a little, a little loopy, but I am screwed on the right bolt. Are you listening? Amen. It started with all some, you know, the, the Harry Potter series, desensitizing people. Then the Twilight series, all these vampire movies. Huh? These, these creatures eating on humans. Then the zombie craze. Do you realize if you study the book of Revelation, I don't understand it all, and I'm glad I'm not going to be here to experience it all, but do you realize there are going to be creatures that come out from hell and they're going to destroy people? The devil is desensitizing everybody to this stuff. People have gotten so used to seeing all this garbage that they're not going to be shocked by some things. Hmm? I see cars around Florence walking around with zombie apocalypse uh, stickers on. You know, ready for the zombie apocalypse. Well, you need to be ready for the Lord. But when we go, the Holy Spirit goes. There was a series came out not long ago, or a movie, I don't see it, I don't watch that junk, called The Purge. And my understanding under that movie is, is that there's a period, I don't know how long it is, three days or something, where people are allowed to do any wicked thing you want to do and there's no consequences. It's preparing them. When the Holy Ghost is, you realize the Holy Ghost is the only thing keeping this world from being totally chaotic now, anyway. Yep. The Holy Ghost and God's people. Yep. Hmm? You realize that uh, when we go, our Bibles will still be here, but people aren't going to pick it up and understand because the Holy Ghost ain't going to deal with them about it. Right. It's, it's under, you, you got to understand. And, and that series that came out left behind, there is no second chance. And I'll bring it out here in a second. If you haven't accepted the Lord if, after hearing the gospel now, There'll be no hope for you. We see the Antichrist is going to be revealed. And he'll have all the answers. And during this tribulation period, the only way you'll be able to buy and sell and get gain is you have to take his mark. It's called the mark of the beast. Now, when I first got saved back in 1974, there was a whole lot of preaching on the end times. I mean, there was the oil crisis and a lot was going on in the world. I can remember this. I know you Google it, young people. Uh, uh, you could only buy gas depending on if your license plate ended in an odd or an even number. And, and uh, it, it was scary times. All the factories were laying off. Uh, 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 I remember grown men waiting in line for over an hour. They opened up a Wendy's in our town. And, uh, and grown men waited for uh, over an hour just to get an application to try and get a job at Wendy's because they got laid off from their uh, uh, factory job. And that was back before the government was so kind to just keep paying you not to work. Hmm? And I can remember hard times. And I can remember a whole lot of preaching on the end times. And back then, I'm just a young fella, and back then I'm, I'm thinking, well, that's going to be pretty hideous walking around with a big tattoo on your forehead, 666. But now so many people are tattooed up, it's normal. 
And not that this is my message, but I'm here, might as well say, you know, you know, tattooing is a, is a form of devil worship. It's paganism. In Deuteronomy, it tells us not to mark our bodies. You say, well, it's cool. Well, it's against the will, word of God, so it ain't right. Mm -mm. And people say, well, you shouldn't preach that way. You'll offend people. Well, the word of God offends you. I'm sorry, you're going to have to get offended. But yet, we've got so many people that are falling into the patterns that is issuing in the Antichrist. But well, there's so much technology now. It's probably not going to be an ugly tattoo. It's probably going to be a chip. Hmm. There's even talk this new COVID vaccine might even have a chip in it. That's what Bill Gates is pushing for. So they can have your medical records readily available when you walk up. Well, why don't he stick to computers and leave the medical science to experts in that field? Yeah. And experts not named Fauci, okay? Yeah, right. uh, mm, there's going to be one way to buy and sell. You've got to have the mark of the beast. And the Bible makes it clear if you protect the mark, you're damned. There's no help for you. And if you don't take the mark, you're going to have to steal, rob, or do whatever you can, live off the land, do whatever you can to get by because there'll be no help for you in the exercise of society. Well, it's going to be a terrible, terrible time. Terrible time. But the Antichrist will be revealed. In these verses, we see there's an abundance of those who reject Christ and are damned. Look with me in verse number 10 again. It says, uh, Because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, and that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The word is pretty clear that if you've heard the gospel and you've rejected it, once the church is taken out of here, God's going to bring strong delusion onto you where you'll believe the lie of the Antichrist, you'll take the mark, and you'll be damned. I've had many people over the years ask me if God's a God of love, and He is, because He is love. If God's a, a God of righteousness, and if God's a just God, why are there people in Indonesia? Why are there people in China? Why are there people in these uh, closed countries who've never heard the gospel? If God's so good, why are those people not going to have any hope? Well, first of all, God is good. And it's God's will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And through uh, uh, ministries like Bearing Precious Seed and, and what Dr. King's got since he retired the church about getting the, the gospel to uh, uh, outside the, uh, uh, the, the window of what, what most people that have the Bible and through the internet, there are a lot of these folks hearing that have never heard before. But they don't hear in masses because... Years ago, leaders of those countries rejected the gospel and refused to let it be brought there and preached. I remember hearing a story about how Attila the Hun, when he had overcome much of that region, he sought for religious people from all over the world to come and present to him their case for what they believe. And it's, it was told to me that uh, uh, some gospel missionaries headed that way, but because of the weather, and they started late, they got to uh, uh, there, and the winter was so unbearable they couldn't get to him in time, and so he wouldn't even hear them. And he went with uh, the pagan religion that was presented to him. The gospel never got to him. Friends, that's why we need to be involved in missions. We can't get there too late. And a lot of these communist countries won't let the Bible be taught and preached and there are some underground churches but I said all that to say this God is just because during the tribulation period a lot of these people will reject the, the mark of the beast and God will grant to them grace and mercy and they will be in heaven because they do trust God by faith and we're thankful God makes a way but those that have never heard the gospel uh, they may have hope during the tribulation. It's going to be hard. They're going to be willing to die for it. But those that have heard the gospel and rejected it, there'll be no hope. No hope. They'll die and go to hell. It's sad to think that there'll be people who sat on Baptist church pews in America that died and went to hell because they did not accept the gospel.
they did not accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They did not exercise the faith that God has given every man to believe on the Lord and be saved. It's a terrible, terrible thought. It's a thought that keeps me up at night sometimes when I know there have been people who are lost sitting in the service and they walk out that door lost. I wonder what's it going to take for folks to get born again. He said, well, preacher, you did your part, but still, Paul said, knowing the terror of the Lord, I persuade men. What else could I have done? What else could I have said? That haunts me at night. Because I don't want to see anybody die and go to hell. Well, I've rambled some, but I'm interested. Let's talk about this Antichrist for just a second. Let me show you some things about him. First of all, he is devilish. Look in verse number 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. The Bible calls him the son of perdition. He's full of the devil. He's devilish. Now, if you think the devil walks around in a red suit and has horns and a pitchfork, you've, you've drank the Kool-Aid. The Bible says he can be transformed into an angel of light. Can I say, Delilah was a devil in Samson's life. The devil uh, always has a way of making the package look very, very nice without revealing who he is. He's deceptive. He deceived Eve. He's sly. He's crafty. He wants you to think he's walking around with a pitchfork and horns on his head. That's not him at all. He's slick-tongued. And can I say, when the Antichrist shows up, I imagine he's going to be a good-looking fella. He's going to be an educated fella. He's going to be a fellow with charisma that people just can't wait to hear him speak. Uh, he's going to be a fellow that uh, uh, he just uh, is so engaging that he just grips your attention from the very first word. But he's a devil. He's a devil. You know, it was said of Hitler that Hitler was very backwards until he stood before masses of people and they said there would be a spirit overcome him, that he would speak and people were willing to charge and, and, and charge the very gates of hell for him. Say, so what was that spirit? The devil. You don't, you don't slaughter six million Jews and countless uh, 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 gypsies and all kinds of other people without being full of the devil. Mm? Well, can I say the Antichrist is devilish? Can I say this? He's desirable. Look again at verse number 9. It says he's coming after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. He's desirable. Those kids that read that Harry Potter series, some of them testified afterwards, who wants Jesus Christ? He's stupid. Harry Potter does magic. Uh, can I say the Antichrist is going to be full of power? He's got power. He don't have all power, but he's got the power of the devil behind him. And he's got signs and wonders. Can I say people won't believe the word of God. They won't believe the gospel. But if somebody from Falmouth, Kentucky will tell them they saw Mary in the clouds in the sky, people will come from all over the country to see if they can see Mary in the sky. That happened here about 20 years ago. People are interested in signs and wonders. People are always trying to figure out how the magician did that. But this, this fellow is going to be a glorified magician. That's all he's going to be. He's devilish, he's desirable, but he's deceptive. Notice it said lying wonders, but look at verse number 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. He's a deceiver, because the devil's a deceiver. Jesus said the devil was a liar and the father of it. And this is the spawn of Satan here. He's going to be full of the devil, and he's going to be a liar. He's going to deceive people. For the purpose of damning them to hell. How many people do you think is going to end up in hell because the devil deceived them during an invitation and said, just wait till next week? Yeah. Hmm? He's a deceiver. With all that in mind, here's my thought tonight. Now, I'm thinking about all these people listening to this joker and buying in hook, line, and sinker. Now, see, some of you aren't old enough to remember. I've been around when I've seen movements of so-called Christianity and how many people flocked to them. Now, anybody that's a Bible believer could see right through it. I remember uh, 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 the Promise Keeper movement. 
I mean, they lined up. Everybody lined up. Let's all put aside our doctrinal differences. Uh, let's all come together, sing kumbaya. I mean, they'd have uh, football coaches there. They'd have preachers from every denomination. I told you all a few weeks ago, denomination means abomination. Yeah, I told you that. Uh, uh, but then they'd have Catholic priests there. Uh, they had everybody there. Uh, and they said, we're just trying to teach men to be men. No. They were trying to deceive people. Where are all those thousands of people that used to pack stadiums full? Where are they at in our churches today? You know what happened to most of them? Most of them got offended or hurt by somebody, and they're out altogether. Hmm. You know what you can, you can tell about a, mo a, a movement? If it's not of God, it don't last. And, and I could go on and on and on of things I've seen over the years. I, I remember, you know, uh, uh, the 40 Days of Purpose movement. Uh, that book was nothing but glorified humanism, how you can control your own destiny. I don't need 40 Days of Purpose. I need purpose every day, and I get that from the Scriptures. Uh, I don't need some man to tell me what I need. And I need Jesus to tell me what I need and how to conduct myself and... Uh, I don't need some man to tell me to be a man. The Bible says, quit you like men. I don't, I, the Bible's got all the answers for your life. Amen. And the best counsel you can ever get is the preaching of the Word of God, Amen. the teaching of the Word yeah. of God. Um, but this is what I want to preach on. I want to preach on what causes people to relinquish their rights. What causes the masses of people to throw down everything they was raised to believe in, everything that they've been taught, everything that they thought was fundamental in their life, and throw it all away because of somebody that has some charisma. What causes people to relinquish their rights? It's been happening in America since 9-11. Americans have been relinquishing their rights. And it's been done so subtly they don't even know it. I know he was a so-called Republican, but George W. Bush was a, a, a progressive. He wasn't interested in protecting the Republic of America. He was a progressive, and he was interested in the global world movement. Hmm? You've got to be careful anything that is global. His father he made a statement like this, there's a new world order. Hmm? Can I say this? The word Catholic means universal. Anything that is global, you ought to run from. The Lord's not interested in go global. He's interested in the local church. Amen. Mm? Um, but uh, ever since uh, George W. Bush in 9-11, he, he issued the Patriot Act. First of all, the Patriot Act added more jobs to the government than any other thing in history. And the Patriot Act started taking your rights. Do you realize here is this local church, if we want to go open another savings account, let's say for our jail ministry, uh, uh, say for the addiction ministry, uh, uh, we want to open a savings account uh, for our Sunday school ministry, for a bus ministry, whatever it is, if we want to open a savings account, do you realize we've got to get a 50C3 for that? Because that's a separate ministry. Unless we do it under the church and then add the name to it, whatever we want to call it, because that's what we do. Every time we open a new savings account, new account, we just open one under the church, but it's designated for this and for that. If not, you've got to get another complete 50C3 uh, form from the government saying that you're a legal ministry in order for the bank to do that. You know why? Patriot Act. You know why you're only allowed to deposit so much money in your account over a period? used to be a week now. I think they've taken it out a little bit longer now. You know why? Because of the Patriot Act. Do you realize that under the Patriot Act, uh, they now know where you go because of your cell phones? Every time you pass a cell phone, it pings a tower. Every time you pass a tower, your phone pings it. They know where you've been. In some states, on them signs that say, Welcome to wherever, on the back side of it, it's got a camera. It takes a picture of your license plate. They know when you've been there. They know when you left. I'm talking about in America. They know all about you. Amen. Hmm. Now, fortunately, when none of us are anything much to look at, so they don't care about us. But they know about you. 
But what causes people to relinquish their rights? Can I say, first of all, panic and fear. Panic and fear. People will sell out everything they've ever stood for if they're afraid. Hmm? Now, you can call it what it is. This COVID-19 was nothing more than an instrument to cause panic and fear in our country. Was it a viable virus? It absolutely was. People have gotten sick from it. Talk to that preacher. He got, he got real sick from it. There are folks that have gotten sick. But let me help you something. There's always a virus. You know why it's COVID-19? There have been 18 other ones. You know what COVID-19 really is? It's a different strain of the flu. That's what it really is. And uh, 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 there's always a swine flu, a bird flu, a, a, a mosquito flu. There's always something that people are faced with. That's why every year they have to change the flu vaccine to hopefully uh, uh, counteract what new flu virus is out. It's all a, a crapshoot. They're trying to figure out what new strains are coming and all this thing. Uh, uh, there's always a sickness. Uh, there's always a flu. There's always uh, something. But COVID's been really remarkable because uh, nobody dies of heart attacks anymore. Uh, nobody dies of cancer anymore. Uh, nobody dies of the flu anymore. Nobody dies of strep throat anymore. Nobody dies of uh, Brother James said last week, you can jump out of an airplane and your chute don't open and you hit the ground and it was COVID that killed you, huh? It's a remarkable disease. I have yet to figure out how it knows when you pull up to a drive through window that part of it is plastic and it knows not to hit that. And some of the, I mean, I don't know how it does all this stuff. It is a smart virus. Huh? Uh, head cancer doctor in you see, I still have to see him. You know, as a matter of fact, I got to go see him next week. My four months checkups over the summer. He told me. He said this mask stuff. He says it's ridiculous. He said these masks don't do anything. He said they wouldn't let me wear one in surgery because they're ineffective. He said this is the first time in history that politics and science has come together. And COVID has been brought to this country to start the process where people will listen and let the government dictate to them how they are to live. Do you realize that your uh, constitution uh, starts out as we the people, the government works for us. We don't work for the government. Uh, the government is to listen to us. We're not to listen to the government. Uh, 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 there are elected officials, yes, uh, 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 but they were never given the license to dictate to us how to live. The constitution does that. Do you realize in every state that it's been lawsuits have been brought to these liberal governors who tried to shut down churches, they've been destroyed in court case after court case after court case because of the First Amendment to the Constitution. Yet there are still churches afraid to open. What will the government say? Who cares? Hmm? And we've got a little Hitler running Kentucky right now. And I hope he's watching. I hope he gets born again. Amen. Uh, he claims he's a deacon of the church, he, uh, of a church he goes to. He needs to get saved and get in the right kind of church. Because uh, any man that is a, a saved man will not support abortion and he will not bring bondage against churches. He supports the abortion crowd. He supports the liquor crowd. He supports the gambling crowd. And he's against the righteous crowd. The man needs to get born again. Amen. But I'm telling you, they've got people scared to death. And it amazes me how many people see through it. They realize the mask isn't going to help them. Right. And again, I said it this morning, how come they're shutting down restaurants, but Walmart's wide open? Yep. Hmm? Come on. They shut down churches. Yeah. Hmm? Now, the average church only runs about 50 people. They're shutting down churches. But yet Walmart will probably have 10,000 people walk through there today. Yep. Hmm? And when's the last time you saw somebody go up at Kroger's after you punched in your, your, your little code in your card uh, to pay for your groceries, and they wash, went up and they washed down, you know, the little card reader? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's still, somebody's touching the plastic. Right. Right. Yep. Hmm? They have set an environment of fear. Because for every one that sees through that this is a bunch of uh, garbage, there's 15 that believe them. That's right. I know people that go to fundamental Baptist churches and they believe everything Andy Bashir says. They're scared to death to go outside their home. They're scared to death to do anything. 
Hmm? Just like the travel ban. Well, you can't go into another state. Says who? Yeah, come on. This is still America. Yes, sir. I've been to several throughout the, throughout the year. Huh? Why are they saying that? They want to, they want to keep you isolated. Yeah. Now, I'm not a cons conspiracy theorist. I'm a realist. But for 20 years, what people haven't known is they started building what we would call concentration camps just this side of Indianapolis. Now, why are they building something to hold people like that for? They've got them, Phil. There's Black, Hop Black Hawk helicopters flying over them all day long. Hmm? Why did they build a readiness center for the National Guard right out here in Burlington? We've already got the National Guard Center there in Walton. Why did we need one? And this thing's big. And it's right up to where my brother-in-law used to live, and he watched them build it, and he says they built more underground than they have above ground. And why is it when they can't mess with our Second Amendment right, but they can stop manufacturers from making ammunition? Go buy some 9 millimeter today and tell me where you bought it. Hmm? Why are they doing that? Because they can't control people unless they disarm them and they scare them to death. Hmm? Do you know why Europe has fallen? Because they don't have weapons. The only thing that's helped America is Jesus and your Second Amendment. They know that every little redneck around this country and over 80 million of them voted for Trump. They know that they're ready to go back to Civil War time. That ain't no problem. Amen. There's just some things you're not going to pry from me, and, you know, unless I'm dead. And one of them is you know, my Smith & Wesson. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Panic and fear. It causes people to relinquish their rights. Look what happened in New York. That Cuomo's an idiot. He's wicked. He has caused the death of more senior citizens than any disease that America has seen in a long time. Hmm? He's an idiot. And thankfully, the police there stood up and said, no, we're not going to enforce some of this goofy stuff you're talking about. And the governor's not far from them. They're, they're idiots. But they had people scared to death in New York City. I've seen pictures of New York City as a ghost town. You don't understand. New York City, there's, there's millions of people walking them streets all day long. Not anymore. Hmm? And it's not only there. It's throughout this country. California. I mean, they tell you, go when, when you could go to a restaurant, you said you had to wear your mask. You take it off, put it in a bite of food, put it on. That's stupid. Yes, it is. Huh? Unless my mask tastes like bacon, I ain't wearing it while I'm eating. Yes, sir. Huh? But they have people scared to death. I know smart people that believe all this stuff, they're scared to death. I'm talking about highly educated people. They're fearful of this virus. There's some of our folks, some of their relatives, say, oh, you can't go to church. You'll get sick. Well, if you're not going to go to church, can't go to Walmart, can't go to Kroger's, can't go to a gas station, can't go, you stay at home, you can get sick at home. i got news for you. Amen. Right. Amen. But they've caused a panic in this country. Yep. They've caused fear in this country. And people will relinquish their rights and be controlled because of panic and fear, can I say? Secondly, and the play on words here, I hope you pick this up. Another reason people will relinquish their rights is because preference trumps freedom. Did you get that? Preference, Donald J. Trump's freedom. There are many... Republicans that do not support Trump because he is not part of the swamp or part of the crowd that wants to control you. He is for freedom. And I don't agree with everything Donald Trump says, but there's been no president in my lifetime that has done more for the local church than Donald J. Trump. Uh, by retracting the Johnson Act and giving us the liberty where I can mention his name while I'm preaching is something amazing. Hmm? Uh, but I'm telling you, he has been for the church. He's been for Israel. And he's definitely not for the swamp. They hate him because they can't control him. 
He just says what he's thinking. Yeah, how can you buy him? Huh? There's only been one president per capita that had more money than him, George Washington. George Washington, based on our dollar compared to what he had in that day, George Washington had more wealth than Donald J. Trump. No other president has. Huh? I mean, he donates his salary. He's cherry every year, you know? What they pay him to be president, <laughs> he makes that an hour in interest. That ain't no big deal for him. I'm just trying to help you. They can't control him. And people want their preferences more than their freedom. There are some people that voted for Biden just because they hated Trump. Huh? Biden's an idiot. He wasn't a good politician 30 years ago, but I'm telling you right now, he drools his oatmeal down his chin every day. The guy's not equipped to be president. Huh? He's not. And the, and the woman he picked as vice president, you might as well call her Jezebel. That woman's wicked. That woman is not for America. That woman's not for liberty. That woman's for herself. And I want to tell you something. Trump did win the election, and it's going to come out through these court cases and all that kind of stuff. I hope they put him in. If they don't, mark her down. We're that much closer to Jesus coming. But even if they do, the, the left is going to fight him for the next four years, far worse than they fought him these first four years. Hmm? I hope he just gets the Obama syndrome where he just starts writing executive orders. Yeah, that's the only way Obama legislated. He couldn't get anything passed. He just executive ordered everything. I hope Trump does that. I'm here to tell you, but people want their preference more than freedom. There's some people, as long as they can watch college football on Saturday, pro football on Sunday, as long as they can, uh, you know, eat barbecue sauce and we'll do whatever, they don't care about the government. Look at how many Americans don't vote, don't know anything about politics, don't know anything about society, don't care. That as long as they can eat football, drink beer, do whatever they want, they're, they're fine. Right. And there's a lot of people, as long as they can get what they want, they don't care about freedom. Hmm? You know, most people don't even know what that flag stands for. Hmm? Thought about this. What causes people to relinquish their rights? When you promise to provide funding. When you provide funding for people, they'll follow you. That's why we have people that are on eight and nine generations of being on welfare. Uh, when, when FDR instituted the New Deal to get us through the Depression, it was never, ever supposed to be a lifestyle. But the politicians that followed realized, and by the way, they were Democrats, uh, realized that as long as we kept people down, we could control them. They'll always vote for us if they have to depend on us for their money. And when you provide funds for people... They'll relinquish their rights. Because we live in a day and age where people worship the almighty dollar. Mm. Yeah. As long as I can go buy what I want to buy. I don't care who's run the country. Mm. You know, it's sad to say, but even if Biden gets in, he's not running the country. Mm. Uh, George Soros and whoever's in the Illuminati is running the country. Mm. You provide funding, people will relinquish their rights. I thought about this. When you promise food, people will relinquish their rights. Now, I certainly wasn't around in the Great Depression. How was that, Phil, back during the Depression days? I mean, yeah, pretty tough. <laughs> but I've seen the pictures of, of, of grown men waiting in line to get toilet paper. That's why as soon as they talk about a bad storm or with COVID, everybody went and bought toilet paper. Oh, people used to have to wait in line for toilet paper. Well, listen. I kind of like toilet paper myself. Huh? But there were long lines of people waiting for the government to give them food. Because there was no work. It was the Great Depression. But I can remember in the 70s, where the government would have where you could wait in line and get blocks of cheese. It was like five pound blocks of cheese. And people would wait for that stuff. When you promise people food, hey, Thanksgiving Day, Look at how many people went to the food bank to get Thanksgiving dinners. Free food. Hmm. I imagine they'll be doing it for Christmas too. The economy's been hit in some areas. Folks are out of work. When you promise people food, they'll relinquish their rights. As long as they got something to eat. Listen, you talk to some of these missionaries who've been to countries where people don't have rights and they don't have food. They'll gladly take the food over the rights. Hmm. You go to some of these countries in, in Africa where they might have just a handful of rice, less than really one meal for the whole day. And people are starving to death. 
They'll do whatever anybody says to get food. And then I thought about this. Some people will relinquish their rights. This is where the Antichrist is going to get them. For a positive forecast. Things are going to get better. Hmm? I've got all the answers. Isn't it amazing what three hours of the whole summer that Biden did campaign? You know why he didn't campaign? They knew they had the, the voting machines rigged. Yep. Yep. Nancy Pelosi even said, we know we're going to win the election. You know why her husband sat on the committee of one of these voting machine companies? Hmm? Uh, but uh, uh, listen, I really hope Brashear's listening tonight. Uh, but listen, Biden even said he had the answer for COVID. Why didn't he give it? People are dying. People are sick. Hmm? Yeah. That's why I know faith healers aren't real. Yeah. If I had the ability to heal people, I would never leave the hospitals. Yeah. I'd be there all day healing people. Yeah, right. Huh? Why would God give you a gift if you didn't use it? Yeah. Come on. These guys got all the answers. Oh, I know exactly what to do. That's what the Antichrist, he's going to pro promise a, a, a positive forecast. You know, in Jeremiah's days, when Jeremiah's having to preach, and he didn't get one convert, and he's preaching that judgment's coming, judgment's coming, judgment's coming. The false prophets of that day stood up, and they cried peace and safety. They said, thus saith the Lord, when the Lord had not spoken. Amen. But they were given a positive forecast, so the, the, the king would always uh, throw down on Jeremiah, throw him in prison, all kinds of stuff. Wouldn't believe Jeremiah. Because somebody had a positive forecast. Isn't it amazing? People won't sit and listen to preaching, but they listen to Joel Osteen. Amen. He don't even call himself a preacher anymore. He's a motivational speaker. He's always so positive. Something good's going to happen to you today. Sow a little seed, and God will bless it. Every day's a Friday. Well, my Friday stunk this week, so I'm glad they're not all Fridays. Huh? But see, when somebody's given a positive outlook, positive forecast, people will relinquish their rights. The Antichrist is going to show up and say, i got all the answers. They say, okay, we'll pay all homage to you. Take a mark of bees, no problem. Let me have it. Can I say, I'm glad there are some positive things. The gospel, the church, God's people, the hope of His coming. There's even some positive things secularly in this world. But don't lose sight of the fact we live in the nasty now and now. Amen. We live in dark days. We live in the day uh, where people hate the things of God. Yeah. They've been lied to. Uh, what, what gets me in this whole equation? Where are the Walter Cronkites? Young people Google him. Yeah. He just told the news. Yeah. Yeah. Newsmen used to just give the facts. Here in Cincinnati we had a guy named Al Shadokati. Yeah. He was so boring... Monotone voice, but he told the facts every night. Now the media, all they do is push the narrative of the swamp. Even Fox News went bad. By the way, Fox News is now run by Donna Brazil, which was Hillary's campaign manager, which gave Hillary all the answers in the debates before the debates, and Trump still destroyed her. Huh? I'm just trying to help you tonight. People are looking for hope. And they're looking for something positive. And they'll give away their rights for something. Isn't that what you did when you trusted Christ? Amen. Wasn't you on the auction block of sin? Yeah. And there was nothing positive in your life? And the Holy Ghost convicted you, let you know you was a sinner? And when you right. accepted the Lord, did you not get bought with a price? Yes. Amen. Huh? I'm now a slave to the Master. <laughs> I now have liberty. Yeah. Yeah. I've been set free from yeah. the bondage of sin. I've been set free from the powers of the world. Yeah. I've been set free from all that because Christ is my Lord and Master. Amen. But you see, you that work a job know you're always going to work for somebody. You're always going to answer to somebody. Well, people will realize that and they'll, they'll just sell out everything for the hope of a few little trinkets in this life. These governors and these politicians that are controlling people or seeking control are doing these very same things. And it's all setting us up for when the Antichrist comes and takes over. 
it's amazing how much of their narratives the liberal media does push. Now, again, I, I'm not as old as Ted. Not many people are. But I'm not far behind him. I remember a day and age, if you'd had a governor come, stand up and say, well, you can't even sing in church, the media would have raked them over the coals. And I remember a day and age where people would have just grabbed him and took him out and thrown him out of office. So we're not going to tolerate that stuff. But yet now people just buy it, hook, line, and sinker. The reason people will relinquish their rights because they've been lulled to sleep. The reason they'll believe Joel Wolstein is because they haven't seen enough power of God in us to see something that's better. No wonder Paul said it's high time we awake for our salvation is nearer than when we believed. Why don't we show them something that's real? Why don't we just let them know we're not going to back down in tonight. We're going to stand for the scriptures. We're going to stand for God. And we're going to do what's right. And if the governor don't like it, he can lump it. Yeah. I've done drawn that line in the sand. We will not close. Yeah. Amen. I don't care what mandates he has. As a matter of fact, he's been, he won't mess with churches. I mean, he's been whipped three times in the courts. He's not going to mess with churches. Now, he'll mess with other areas of your life until he gets beat on them. He's facing a court battle right now. He's going to get beat. You can't mess with our inalienable rights and our, and our document of the Constitution and get away with it. And fortunately, one thing Donald Trump's done is put about 300 judges in these federal positions. And thank the Lord for that. We won't have any uh, Philadelphia kangaroo courts. God help us. People are relinquishing their rights all around us because they're afraid because can't put food on the table because somebody's offering them a little bit of money God help us to show them there is a better way Amen. and his name's Jesus Amen. and if, you're, if your problem is little food or little coins David said he'd never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread can I help you in 47 years I've never missed a meal you can probably tell that why because God's good to his people Amen. you put God first you'll never want for anything God will help you, Amen. and he'll be there for you. Sure but so many have relinquished their rights. Can I say this? I'm, I'm trying to close. So many Christians relinquish their rights by listening to the voice of a stranger. And God's people have no business bowing to Baal. I'd rather have his blessings than anything the world can offer. Amen. I'd rather have his peace than anything the world can offer. I'd rather have his hope and his truth than anything the world can offer. What separates us as fundamental independent Baptists is we just believe the book. And we're looking for Jesus to come. God help us to realize so many are being controlled. And it's all part of a system that's heading them like cattle headed to the slaughter. Because the Antichrist is coming. He's on the horizon. He's coming. I have no doubt. He's probably alive somewhere in this world today, being groomed. And say, that scares me, preacher. It excites me. Because all of our problems are about ready to be over. But until Jesus comes, let's be faithful. Let's be strong. Let's point people to the right way. His name is Jesus. And we ought to be thankful we do know the truth. And we do see what's going on. And we do understand where we are in this age and that the Lord's coming. You ought to be thankful for that. There's a lot of people got their head buried in the sand and have no idea. Hmm? It's sad, but even a lot of church people worship Trump more than they do Jesus. And God help us to get back to worshiping Jesus, living for Jesus, and looking for Jesus to come. All right, let's all stand. Mr. Renee, come to the piano while she comes to play something. Maybe you want to come thank the Lord. You know, you got the truth. Maybe you want to come and thank the Lord for saving you. Maybe you want to come and just tell him you love him tonight. Maybe he spoke to you about something else. You just mind the Lord tonight. Let him have his way. Maybe somebody's been a blessing. You just want to go tell him, hey, you've been a blessing. I just want to thank you for your stand and the things of God. She's playing something. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, so many people have been blinded. 
And you told us that the God of this world would blind their minds. He's preparing them for when His church is prevalent during the tribulation period. And he's running the show. God help us to shed light, shed truth, do it with grace and love, win people in this day and age. Lord, you've been good to us. We thank you for that. But Lord, we're debtors to the gospel. Help us to tell others about Jesus. Lord, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Bless this invitation. These folks in the altar, bless them, help them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.